So I got asked a really good question last night, which is gonna be the content for this video. Uh, in fact, it actually took me a little while to put together all of my notes so I could really give you uh, a good answer. But essentially, I was asked the question about which dating coach do I recommend uh, for guys to, uh, to work with. Now, unfortunately, I'm not going to be giving a bias answer and saying like, which is my favorite or that, although I'm pretty certain they would probably slip me a fiver to, uh, uh, to give me a nudge to, to say their name. But since 2009, I have worked with easily um, about 80 plus different dating coaches. So that's over like the last 14 years or so. So as you can imagine, I have seen all sorts of characters, people with very different personalities and certainly skills as well. And there have been plenty of coaches that have been really, really good for the industry. And also a lot of coaches that haven't. Uh, and uh, truth be told, um, I've been also very strict with a lot of coaches over the years where there have been some that I have just been very blunt with them and said, I personally don't believe that you should be a, uh, a dating coach. You know, so if there is at least some kind of regulation in this industry, then it's got to be coming from me if I'm going to be working with so many and uh, uh, and helping them to, to grow their businesses to hopefully help you to become more confident. But coming back to the question, which coach do I recommend? Well, it ultimately comes down to which kind of coach is going to be suitable in particularly to you. So I've put together this video um, and all of my notes. So I will have to look at my notes with this, um, but I've put together essentially a bit of a plan and uh, a guide for you to go through, certainly in your own time, and for you to then do your research into a coach and what kind of things you need to be looking out for to make sure that they are going to be the right coach for you and that you're going to avoid working with someone who might be a little bit of a con artist rather than a dating coach or someone who's um, not in it for the right intention, shall we say. So I've categorize this into four different areas uh, that we'll go through. And I will try my very best to go through these as fast as possible because there's a lot of things I'd like to cover. Um, but I also don't want to just say like, oh yeah, there's this and then there's this and you don't really get anything out of it. So I'm going to try and also give you some stories that I've uh, certainly experienced and seen of things over the, uh, the last 14 years as well. So I've categorized this into four areas. Uh, the first, which I'll go through is uh, the actual researching into the coach. Um, and, uh, you know, what do you need to see that just as that first step? Then uh, we're going to look at researching into the services of a coach, uh, which, you know, you don't want to just go like, yep, I really like that coach. I'll just work with them. You want to know that they've got the services that are going to be appropriate to you and your needs. Um, then the next section will be talking about or things to talk about and ask during the consultation with the dating coach. Uh, and then lastly, which uh, everything that I've put in this list, uh, which I've titled things not to tolerate, um, this list is going to certainly have elements of things that uh, are going to be in some of these other categories. So um, I do recommend that you probably watch through the video to the end or I'm going to do my very best to add chapters onto this so you'll be able to go through it and hopefully find the uh, the things that are going to be more more relevant to you. So, right, let's let me scroll back up. So researching into a coach. So if you're going to think about working with a coach, you can't just take someone's word for it that someone's really great and yeah, you should go and work with them. You need to go through a bit of a vetting process. You need to make sure that that particular coach is right for you because just because someone else has certainly worked with that coach doesn't always mean that they are going to be the right coach for you to work with. Everyone's got very different personalities. Everyone's got very different styles, but more importantly, everyone's at very different levels. You know, people who maybe have just come out of a relationship and they just don't know where to begin. They don't know how to talk to girls or women they don't know how to have a normal conversation with someone. Maybe they've even forgotten how to flirt. 
Um, so you're going to have your beginners or you're going to have someone who maybe has done a lot of uh, street approaching um, uh, for a while and, you know, maybe they need someone to kind of tell them what they're doing right and what they're doing wrong or maybe someone is just going straight into doing street approaching and uh, they want to work on their confidence and they want to have a date in life that they feel that they deserve. So it's important to first of all do the research on the coach but what kind of research do you need to do? Well this list uh, it's in no particular order um, so first of all you need to have a look at their content that they've got out on social media so whether it be on like YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, wherever um, all of the coaches that I've worked with over the years all of their content is on YouTube. Um, I think it's the best platform for looking at any kind of video content um, and it also gives people the opportunity to create a database of all of the proof of their skill as a coach and put it in one place and if it's appropriately categorized in a playlist on YouTube then you're as a coach um, you as the uh, the audience or the uh, the prospect to that coach is going to be able to look at the content that they need to look at to um, know if that coach is going to be right for them so for me videos are absolutely essential and they are important um, if a coach doesn't have uh, proof of their skill um, and if they're not putting content out on a regular basis that's proving that they've still got this skill then I would be already very hesitant about uh, wanting to work with that coach um, I think with this particular industry especially in the uh, the world of a uh, street approaching um, that you uh, you need to have proof going out constantly you can't just be using content from like years ago um, to put that out yes people might see it but ultimately it needs to be content fresh content going out on a regular basis that when people are watching it they can go right so and so uh, is really good at what they're doing um, and also bearing in mind as the viewer that the coach should be just doing these approaches as demonstration purpose only um, as much as people get a bit funny of this idea of like oh they better be like dating those women and sleeping with them I, I don't think it's necessary at the end of the day all you're paying for or all you're looking to, to learn is the skill to be able to get yourself onto dates um, what happens after that is really down to any everyone's discretion I say anyone's discretion but it's everyone's discretion so what the coaches do in their own time is entirely just down to them so do also bear that in mind um, but they do need to be putting out proof that they can approach that they can have conversations with people um, is there constant video transformations or testimonials and are the videos new or old so um, besides the proof of content going out um, of them being able to do the skill themselves it's one thing for these guys or for coaches to be able to uh, do the act themselves but it's another thing to be able to coach um, there have been many coaches or people that have tried to be coaches in the past who have hilariously they've done like a boot camp or a residential experience and then they're like hey I can be a coach now too um, and they are just absolutely incapable of helping someone else they can uh, some I've certainly had that I've uh, been confident being able to do the approaching as normally but others uh, I do remember one many years ago who hired me to do filming and we I kid you not we'd walked around for like two hours and he didn't get like a single approach in. I had to genuinely give him like a proper push and be like that you're paying me to help you to get content you you know you need to be doing something otherwise I don't recommend uh, us uh, carrying on with the session maybe you need to be prepping yourself before the session and stuff and I, unfortunately or ultimately that person uh, kind of sizzled out with their um, their business of trying to be a, a dating coach um, so it's really important that there is proof that they can work with their clients um, I know it can be a very challenging thing for coaches to sometimes get people willing to be on camera but it's important though that they try and get that somewhat regularly um, to uh, to prove that this is how they or this is show off how they coach their style of doing things and just how they 
um, they talk and um, uh, and I suppose influence uh, their client in getting the results that they want. So if a coach hasn't got uh, content going out that is um, uh, stuff proving uh, on a regular basis that they, first of all, they have the skill to be able to go and approach. And also if they're not putting out testimonials of clients or video transformations of like proof of the before and after of guys working with them, then um, yeah, I would consider probably just maybe having a look at uh, another coach or two uh, in that aspect. Um, uh, has the coach got advice and demonstration videos or are they just showing off? Okay, so very similar to what I've just said, but um, there have been people who've claimed that they're coaches in the past and their YouTube channels have been more of just like a showing off of like how amazing their life is um, and uh, the kind of results that they get, but nothing that's really coaching related, nothing that kind of says that this is how I work with my clients, this is the kind of results that they can expect. Uh, and instead it seems to be more of like an ego thing, like them just showing off. Um, and I personally, I mean, it will resonate with some guys, I think, but personally, I think, you know, if a client is going to be spending a lot of money, they want to be able to see themselves in the client or uh, that you're doing the transformation with and uh, seeing the kind of results that that they're getting from that. Um, so, yeah, so you that, that one you'll have to kind of take with a pinch of salt. But... Yeah, I, I would always kind of like lean towards going to a coach that um, has got proof of their skill and how they work with their clients. Um, I would also have a look at uh, when watching the videos, I'd be aware of like, do they know what they're talking about? Um, so as the viewer, if you're especially if you're in the dating community and you've probably experienced it yourself, uh, or maybe it's even been you, but it does seem that when people go out and do some street approaching for a little bit, or if they work with a coach for a little bit, or hell, if they've even watched maybe a couple of YouTube videos of their uh, their favorite coaches, suddenly everyone's an expert. Suddenly everyone has this very philosophical way of talking, like they are some uh, Einstein-like genius with uh, the the ladies and that, uh, you know, that they know what they're talking about. Now, to be honest, I think a lot of the uh, the pickup terminology is a lot of crap, especially these days. It was cute back maybe a decade ago, but now I think it is terrible language. I don't think it's very useful for guys. Um, and in fact, I think it also puts them into a very weird uh, mentality if you're kind of like labeling women in, in, a, in a very odd sort of way. So I want you to consider certainly like what language is a coach using um, and also, are they uh, very clear in their explanations? Does their explanations of uh, the topics within dating, does it make sense? Uh, if it sounds way too philosophical and you're like, wow, that sounded really impressive, but I have no idea what that means. Um, and they've not got any videos that kind of like further elaborate or explain what they meant then I would just also um, be very wary of that and consider just watching more content by that coach. Uh, it could be just the case that they've been involved in the dating industry for a little too long um, and they've kind of been maybe a bit too obsessed with the uh, the language within it, which can happen. So it doesn't necessarily mean that a coach is bad, but um, certainly though, just consider that like if you're someone who's very new to getting back into dating, you want to be able to work with someone who can communicate very easy and clean language to you that it, you know it, it just, that it makes sense uh, that it shouldn't then be too complicated for you to stand there and go like what does that mean what does that mean like wow that sounded amazing but what does that so you you don't want to be going through that kind of scenario um how long have they been coaching for so this is another one so um I would, uh, well, you can, in fact, you know what, you can quite easily tell how long someone's been coaching for because of just how old their channel is and how much content they've got on their channel. Uh, so certainly I would trust a more um, long-standing channel than one that's maybe uh, necessarily just started, but that doesn't mean I would rule out a channel that has just started. Um, but you then again need to be looking at that content that's going out um, for you to be able to relate to it. 
Um, but you do get, um, certainly over the years where I've seen a lot of like, uh, peaks and recessions of coaches where like, there's been like waves or of people who've done trainings and then they decide they want to be a coach themselves. And, uh, maybe they even get employed by other coaches and then they realize that they can start their own business and they can make more money that way. And then they break away and have a mutiny from that coach. And then the cycle starts all over again. Um, and then you get the uh, the coaches that stick around because they genuinely want to help people. And then you get the ones who literally just want the rock star lifestyle. They don't really care about the guys that they're helping. Um, they'll say what they can to make the money from them. And then once they've exhausted their time in the industry, then off they go and they just look to uh, to jump into some other career, which is, is kind of sad, really, you know, um, but certainly when you are looking at people's content do though keep in mind just how long have they been coaching for if they are if they say that they've only been coaching for like a couple of months then they should be charging lower prices um now i'll cover about prices maybe a bit later but um yeah if they are charging extortionate prices compared to other coaches or just the same kind of prices as other coaches and they've got very little proof of their experience online then yeah, I would just be kind of wary about um, about working with them or maybe you just have to be a bit more patient and just give them a bit more time to put more content and proof out before you make that decision of going to them as a, as a client. Um, personality type. Uh, so do they exude the personality traits that you want to adopt? So uh, depending on your own personality, you might be looking for someone who's more charismatic. You might be looking for someone who's got a sense of humor, who's more charming or more serious and seductive, or maybe they've got a very kind of masculine kind of vibe to them. Um, and someone can be all of the above, or you'll get guys or coaches who might be like one or two of like different things. So ultimately it's just looking at, you know, which coach again, Kind of resonates with your own personality or which coach has uh, traits that you want to adopt if let's say you're maybe a very shy person and you're looking to become more um, outgoing more charismatic more extroverted then you know what going to someone who has maybe a little bit more energy than you might actually be a good thing so you have to certainly just shop around with this and just look at the content of people who maybe have the same kind of personality trait to you to someone who maybe has traits that you are looking to um uh, absorb and adopt um it's a bit like kind of like why we have make uh, make friends with people usually there's something in someone that you're like you know what i want that trait in myself so we kind of then hang around them and like through osmosis you essentially absorb those character traits and you become a little bit more like them. Um, so uh, yeah, some, something to think about there. Uh, and have they had the experiences you've gone through and are they a likable coach? So um, so this one as well is a bit gonna be a bit hit or miss with people um, because in some circumstances, yes, you do wanna go for someone who is actually very likable, um, and maybe also someone who has gone through the journey that you're looking to go through yourself, because then when it comes to having the consultation, you'll be able to certainly connect with each other really well. Um, they were, you know, if they're saying like, oh, this is what I did when I first started this and that, and I was really shy in this, and you're like, oh yeah, me too, I'm really shy and stuff, um, then you're gonna connect on a much deeper level. Um, and uh, that coach is gonna know a little bit more what's best uh, for you to go through, but also sometimes going to someone who might be a little bit more on the discipline side, like, nope, you need to desensitize yourself. You need to go out, you need to do this. Then that can be just as good. But again, it's going to be really down to, um, uh, how do you want to be treated during your coaching sessions? Um, I know for me, um, I like to then be around someone who's probably a bit more likable and certainly, um, I'm going to go out and have a good time with, you know, if you're going to be meeting women, it should be a joyful occasion. Um, and you want to be having fun. So, um, for me, it just would make sense to kind of lean towards that, but that is just more of a personal preference thing, if anything. Um, 
uh, I've got to, I'm going to certainly have to plow through these. Um, so uh, body types even. So uh, something that certainly has um, uh, become even more and more apparent, I think, over the years is that uh, when a coach then works with uh, a client, maybe of like a particular race or religion or something, um, that can also draw in a particular audience. So sometimes I think as a client, you might be like looking for someone who maybe works with someone uh, or has worked with someone of um, your same caliber. So maybe, oh, well, in fact, there's there's a great example of like, I've worked with some clients now who have had like Indian clients and um, for them, it's been really great because they then had like a load of prospects come forward, all Indian uh, of Indian background. And they wanted to work with the coach because they've seen themselves in the eyes of that that Indian client as well. So maybe, you know, depending on if that is a factor for you, then, you know, absolutely have a look around and see if there is any coaches that have worked with someone or are themselves of that kind of background that maybe you'll feel more comfortable uh, working with. Uh, Cause I've worked with like clients, especially out in America um, who have been either of like Asian origin or black origin um, or have been, um, I, think I think there's, I think there has been Muslim as well uh, and definitely Jewish and stuff. So, you know, again, it's, it's just kind of personal preference on if that is a particular factor for you as well. Um, uh, the style of approaching. Uh, so this, uh, so two more in this particular category. Um, so style of approaching. Is it? Um, is their content? Is their content pickup based, or uh, that they're using, or are they having actual conversations? So I mentioned it earlier, but I, I do think like anything that seems to be more pickup related. So if they're using like lines and routines or something then it, it, it's a bit dated really um the uh, the day game blueprint at the time was a fantastic um coaching program but it is like a decade old now and certainly i think uh conversations have evolved times have evolved and people need to learn to kind of bring out a much more authentic version of themselves so that is maybe something just to consider when working with a coach um, and also, do you resonate with that style? And is that what you want to learn? So um, although I might say that it's dated, there are going to be guys that would much prefer to learn the old pickup styles. And there are coaches that that teach that, you know, maybe you are someone who does want to learn lines and routines to get started, or maybe that's all you just want to learn. Um, you know, that's absolutely fine. Um, but it's finding a coach that is going to have that teaching style and content that is again, appropriate to you. Um, and certainly by browsing around, because there's like hundreds of coaches internationally around the world. Um, it's finding that right kind of coach. Um, and, uh, the last one just in the, uh, the researching of coaches is, um, I've just got a message there, uh, is, um, uh, have you watched enough content to narrow down your searches? So, like I just said, there is a lot of coaches out in the world um, and maybe in your region, in your country. Um, and uh, you need to do the comparisons. You need to have a look around. Don't don't put yourself necessarily in that that box of like, oh, they're the only coach around that I can go to. Uh, if there is a better suited coach for you, then, you know, do be willing to travel, which I will uh, certainly cover very shortly. But um, you need to you you need to compare and watch enough content um don't just make your decision after like five or six videos you know you need to watch maybe like 20 30 40 videos of someone really feel like that you trust them enough that they would be the perfect candidate or suitable coach for you to be uh be working with um all right so that's that is um, everything from uh, researching uh, the coaches. And this is going to be all of the sort of stuff that you need to be looking at um, on their, uh, their YouTube channel.